Hey, Matt. Gene. How are you? Hey, man. How are you? Good. Where are you calling from right now? Oh, it's my basement. It's like a little cave. I've got like a... Dude, that's awesome. <laughs> it's like a theater kind of thing. That's awesome, man. Yeah. How you been? Good. Hey, man. Um, good to be back working. It's been a right. little time off, and yeah, looking forward to it. Actually, yeah. Well, actually, we can jump right into it with this one here. So when it comes to uh, getting back to work now, I mean... The singles have been coming out, coming out, coming out. Congratulations, by the way, the latest single right now. Uh, you got the wrong guy. Uh, I think the second everybody hears that song, when you just read the title of it, you don't expect to actually hear what the song is actually about. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, at first, I was like, okay, this is going to be it's going to be another uh, case of Dean Brody's getting arrested or something like that. It's going to be another bounty, something along those lines. But, <laughs> yeah, it really sounds like that. an arrest thing. You got yeah. the wrong guy, man. Come on. <laughs> Yeah, but you're right. It's funny because uh, even when I first heard it, um, so I actually didn't write this song, but when I first heard it, I was like, what? Why is he saying he's the wrong? Oh, okay. He's saying that she's got the wrong guy. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, no, uh, response has been great. People seem to love it. And we're going to play it for the first time live this, uh, I guess, a week tomorrow. So what have you been up to at this point right now? So... It's, I mean, obviously, again, the, the singles have still been coming out, but touring wise, I even go onto your website now. And there's really only like five dates. Right. So, yeah. So what do you, what I, I, as great of a journalist as I am, the great, greatest question of all time, what have you been up to? <laughs> we, we were actually going to tour last fall, but then we felt like, I don't know that people were completely comfortable still with getting in a, a large groups of people. Sure. Um, so we thought, man, let's just push it out to next year. Um, you know, fill up the festival season, do lots of recording. And so, yeah, we, we do have a lot of dates that aren't announced yet on the website, but, we, and I think we'll have a tour in the fall being announced really quick here, but um, yeah, other than like all the production stuff we're working on, um, lots of writing and recording and going back and forth there. You, I mean, you should know this by now, but the people are needing themselves some Dean Brody shows, even when we announce the one here. So here in Calgary, you got wind sport, which is going to take place on March 24th. As we record this, it is next week. And uh, I mean, shoot, the second we even announced that thing, an opening for you is going to be uh, Tyler Joe Miller, which is awesome. People are losing their minds over it. And uh, wind sports, a huge, a huge venue. So, I mean, That's obviously, cool. no, like people are, people are waiting them for, to get them some more Dean. I love it, man. I need to get me some more Calgary. So. I lived there for two years and I just, uh, yeah, every time I'm back there, I feel a little bit like I'm at home and it's been two years in Calgary, two years in Edmonton. And so, yeah, quite familiar with Alberta and the prairies and the folks there and looking forward to getting back. That's bad. So like, just not to stick too much, obviously just the music side of things. Now this is just in case people actually aren't too sure about your past or really how did Dean Brody really get into music and all that. So you lived in Calgary and all that. Um, I Really, how did all of it start? Like, how how was it that you're this young buck who has this dream of being a musician? Like, how did the whole thing even get started for you to even pursue the thing? Man, my dream I, when I was a kid was to be a punter in the CFL. <laughs> and so I was in, that's funny because I was in Calgary. I was playing. They let me on the team. They let me on the Calgary Colts there just for a little window of time. And I think I got to kick an extra point there at McMahon Stadium. But while I was there, I was, I was I would just goof around and play around with my guitar and stuff. And my friends would be like, Oh man, you sound country. And and I was like, really? And yeah, yeah. They like, got Dwight Yoakam guy or whatever. And I was like, Oh, that's cool. Cause I really liked Dwight Yoakam. Cool. And so I was like, man, I started just messing around with it. And people were like, Hey, I, you know, I think you're, you sound country. And, and so, uh, yeah, I just stuck to that. Did some writing. I wrote some really terrible songs when I was a kid, but, um, I wrote them and the people around me kind of thought they were okay. And I, uh, yeah, I just went from there. Just kept writing, kept singing. I love the, the want to be a CFL punter. I know. It's the, that to honestly, man, I'll <laughs> say this much after the older that I get, the more I realize, cause I'm a big football fan myself. The more I realize I should have not played defense or offense. I should have played special teams as a punter. <laughs> you got bad knees now or what <laughs> oh i got a horrible back like yeah it's completely shot yeah, the punter, I'm a linebacker for okay. them. That's, oh, that's, worry? 
Oh yeah, no, I played linebacker for a number of years, and uh, yeah, I, I got to be honest, it was I, I, I credit those years of playing football to having a really crappy back. Man, that's funny. I got a bad back from yeah from some stuff, but yeah, I, I thought and honestly, I would have loved to have been the quarterback or the receiver. But I lived in the middle of nowhere. We lived like three and a half hours from Calgary. Calgary was the nearest football program, Jeez. and so I just thought, man, if I just punt every day. You know, that's one thing. It's just you kind of being a kicker, you're kind of on your own, right? Mm -hmm. And so I would just go to the field and punt back and forth for hours, hours a day. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody about, wants to be a punter, but well, I did. The thing is, again, now that we're older, we realize actually punter, and you had the idea when you were younger, so smart on you. But man, like being a punter right now would be amazing. I mean, some of these guys in the NFL are like 41 years old, they're still getting signed to teams. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. That's great, man. Now, all right, let's uh, back to the music side of things. Back first. to music. <laughs> I, I swear to you, man, I had a conver I had a full blown, I think I had a half an hour conversation that went about uh, an hour with uh, uh, Brad Rempel because we started talking about football. So I have to right. make sure I don't <laughs> hear too much that way. But uh, all right, so when it comes to the on stage stuff, Dean, I mean, it comes as no surprise to you. Obviously, you're an incredibly mellow guy. You hear it in the songs, you hear it obviously with your personality, even just chatting with you. Where does the energy come from when you're on stage? Fear. <laughs> <laughs> it's just Fair. Petri being petrified. Yeah, no, uh, my band, they give me a lot of comfort. Like, not comfort, that sounds cuddly or something, but <laughs> they make it's me cute. feel like it's a family kind of thing. So having them there gives me a lot of confidence. And, you know, we might have a couple shots before I go on stage. And it's just fun, man. It's, it's it's become fun. And of course, people knowing the songs gives you a lot of confidence, too. And they want to hear the songs and they want to be part of this, you know, memory that we're making that night. And and uh, so that gives me a lot of confidence. But yeah, in the early days, I was oh, scared to death. Like I remember I had a, first, a show I was with. I was doing a couple of shows with Josh Turner nice. in uh, I think it was Georgia. And one night I got up and I totally forgot all my lyrics and I it was like the worst night of my life. And I, I was just so scared and I was opening for Josh Turner and it just got my record deal. And um, So yeah, it's uh, having people, you know, fans cheer you on. They, they encourage you and they, they love your stuff. That's why they're there. And so that's where the energy comes from. You had a moment like that though. So you forgot the lines, obviously terrified. Was it, there a moment there you're like, I'm never doing this again. Oh yeah. But I was too deep already. I'd signed a record deal. And I was like, I've got to find a way to to not get in my inside my head so much and and yeah through some help from some friends and just just practice and just staying at it mm -hmm. uh, you know it, it worked out but yeah it's interesting because my producer at the time his name is Matt Rovey and he'd worked a lot with Alan Jackson and he gave me a lot of confidence too because he's like hey dude like we work with Alan all the time and all these records and he's quieter than you are and people are fine. It's okay. You could just be yourself. And, and that helped me a lot too. Just having that degree of separation from Alan Jackson, because he is really quiet on stage. And as a person, he's, you know, it's really quiet. So that helped a lot in that chapter too. Actually, that's, that's really good to know. I guess, was that kind of the moment you realized too, like you don't have to be, I mean, myself in radio, I, I grew up with the thought that you have to be this over the top, incredibly goofy charismatic individual where now you realize you you really don't have to be that whatsoever you can be yourself was the alan jackson thing kind of your moment to realize i don't have to be this doing backflips and jumping into the stage i can be myself on this stage was it that moment or was it another moment there it was a bunch of those kind of moments that, that made me think okay people just want authenticity i think they don't want me to be somebody i'm not because then that's going to be uncomfortable for everybody and so yeah um I think just being real and people appreciate that. And and some people like, you know, people like Sugarland or whatever that were at the time were running all over the stage and doing these things. And, um, but then like, even you think of modern artists that have been signed recently, like Luke Combs, like Luke's not running around the stage. He's, he's singing. And, and so, yeah, there was a lot of insecurity for me because I felt like you had to move and be crazy and wild and that the music itself wasn't enough anymore, but, uh, yeah, I definitely got comfortable in realizing that people were cool with me just being me. You kind of realize, actually, it's got to be a great point of also realizing that you can't just stand there, play your guitar, sing your songs, and people are going to have the night of their life. 
yeah like if for some reason my legs broken or twisted i could i could just stand there and sing and it'd be okay because it's about the music thank goodness because sometimes you think it's all about the pyro and about the lights and yep. the, you know all the the sideshow kind of stuff but at the end of the day um at least like my fans just want to hear the music and have a good time well, what's great is if the fans, so again, as we talk right now, the show is going to be on March 24th, which is next Friday. If the fans are getting bored, we'll bring some CFL size footballs. We'll just start punting away uh, and just entertain people that way. Just throw me a football. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I want to talk a little bit now about a couple of the last singles that you had there. Congrats, man. I, I mean, the last three that you had, I mean, obviously more than just the three, but the last three that come off the top of my head, uh, you got the wrong guy. Where'd you learn how to do that? I go to jail. They've all been massive successes. And there's a story behind each one. What I really like, and actually I've, I've mentioned this on air before, and I'm glad I haven't now a chance to ask you about it. I go to jail. The beginning of the song, when you say, I'm a quiet guy, I don't say much. If you just stop the song right there, it'd be kind of funny, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good. I actually do that during a show. Like I'm a quiet man. I don't yeah. say much. Just end the song. I just walk off the stage for a break. Yeah. The water break. <laughs> I made the joke a couple of times of when that part comes on for the song, just turning off the radio station. Like he said it. So there we go. That's the end. Of it goes the silent. It goes silent. Uh, Everybody panics. Absolutely. Exactly. But now and, um, you were saying before, obviously, the uh, the last single there, uh, uh, you got the wrong guy. So you didn't write out of the three songs I just mentioned there again. Where'd you learn how to do that? You got the wrong guy. I go to jail. Uh, the inspiration behind that, if you didn't write it, what was the kind of deciding factor? I want to sing these songs. Yeah, I'd go to jail. As, uh, uh, OK, so all four of those guys. Um, Honestly, I just have to relate to it, whether I'm writing it or not. I did write I'd Go to Jail, and uh, I just have to be able to relate to it and think that I could sing this and it makes sense to me. And we, we call it outside songs. Like we're, we're not recording songs that are our own. And we get a lot of songs come through, like hundreds. And there's only a few that I can go, yeah, oh, that's me. Because I've been so used to writing my own stuff over the years. Yeah, yeah. That Whenever it's someone else's song, I have to do like twice I have to invest myself twice as much into it because I didn't come up with the melody, so I have to learn it. I didn't come up with the lyrics, so I have to memorize it better. Um, but yeah, if I can, if I can say that's me, um, that's the, and then have a passion to it. It's like a, there's an X factor to a song when you hear it. You're like, oh man, that that moves me, or that, oh, that's a great way to say that. I want to say that, and so then you take the song. But yeah, just being able to know that it's it's me. It's something I would sing. When you, is, is you a, the people who send you the songs, do they have like a like a somebody singing it also, like the actual writer, or do you just get like a sheet of paper that says, "Here's a song." Yeah, it's all demoed up usually. Like it almost sounds like a record. Uh, it almost sounds like it could be on the radio. Some of these demos, like I remember when I was in Nashville, we would use some of the same players that were playing on Luke Bryan's stuff, and even for demo sessions, like the the studio musicians there, just phenomenal. And so when you get the demo, it's not really a demo. It's it's pretty, it sounds awesome. The singer's singing it. And we have this thing in the industry called demo love. So you love you love the song, you hear it, it sounds great, you want to record it. And then you go into the studio to record it yourself. So you have different musicians that were on the demo. And then you're just like, oh man, like you, you fell in love with the demo. And so then your own stu stuff and the, the way the band did it, the new round, you're kind of like, oh man. So... Yeah, it's it's an interesting game, the whole demo, and then an artist takes it, re-records it, um, quite the process. Is there ever a point where you actually get in contact with a writer and say, you should probably just sing this yourself? It sounds better than anybody <laughs> else could do. Yeah, well, some of the guys down there, um, well, I think I think Hardy was probably doing demos there for a while, and probably Morgan Wallen, and I know I, I sang demos for for people now and then when I was first down in Nashville and and that your voice kind of gets around and, and people go, oh, yeah, that new Hardy song. Yeah, I heard that as a demo two years ago. And um, yes, the some of the guys singing on them are just they're, they're pros. Yeah. If they're not famous, they're professionals. That's for yeah. sure. <laughs> I just kind of figured we'll give it to these guys because they actually 
they kind of know what they're doing with this. Um, look, man, I unfortunately the time's already up, which I actually can't believe in the conversation that we've had so briefly here. I I thank you for the time. We're very excited. Win sport. It's going to be uh, next Friday. You got Tyler Joe Miller again opening up for you. Have you seen Tyler Joe? I mean, you guys are BC boys, so I mean, I'm sure you've seen Tyler Joe perform before. Man, I'm a hermit out here. I, I kind of this is where I'm from and stuff, so I kind of hide down in my my little uh my little world here, but. I, I haven't heard Tyler live, so I'm looking forward to it. But, yeah, he's from BC, too, as well. So looking forward to seeing him again and seeing his show. He uh, he puts on a great show. And, actually, we saw him last year. He was opening up for Jess Moskaluk, and he was great. So Sweet. a great person to open up for you there again, Tyler Joe Miller. It's going to be at Winsport. It's March 24th. Uh, on a final note for I Go to Jail, can we confirm this? The line where you say uh, she's two feet tall, it looks just like her mom, not she's two feet tall, just like her mom. <laughs> yeah, looks just like her okay, mom. <laughs> so she's, she's a toddler. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> uh, once again, Dean Brody, I appreciate the time, brother. Hey, hey, we'll see you next Friday, man. Okay, sounds good. Awesome stuff, yeah. brother. Dean Brody, win sport March 24th. We'll talk to you then. All right. See you, bud. See you, bud.